Good morning. Empty pews are staring back at me at St. Paul's on this Sunday morning. It is strange. It's a bummer. But it's good that we are loving our neighbor by keeping distance from each other to slow down the spread of this pandemic that our world is facing. And so it's good for us to be gathered together in this digital way to be worshiping via our live stream this morning. Welcome to Worship at St. Paul's. You can find a worship outline for this morning's service at the link right under our live stream feed, uh, but you'll also do just fine if you're just uh, listening and watching this morning. Note also that underneath that link to the worship outline for this morning, there is a link to a digital copy of the sermon that I'll preach this morning, as well as a Bible study that is based on that sermon. Hope that you can make use of that uh, either this morning or sometime during this week. Let's worship together today. We know that there is a war going on inside of us between our selfishness and between a desire to selflessly serve others. And today we're going to rejoice that for all the times that we have been selfish, we have a Savior who came here to serve us, to save us, and to set us free from sin so that we can serve others in Christian love. We'll focus on that as we worship this morning. Our opening hymn is hymn 194 in Christian worship, Oh That I Had a Thousand Voices.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful, Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love, cleanse me from my sin, and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. We sing selected verses of the hymn, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. Almighty God, we confess that we deserve to be punished for our evil deeds, but we ask you graciously to cleanse us from all sin and to comfort us with your salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. If you are just joining us on our live stream, know that just below our live stream feed, there is a link to the outline of worship this morning. Uh, you can access the, uh, the digital worship service there. We're on page five of that digital worship service, about to hear the gospel of our Lord. Disciples of Christ find their greatness in serving others, patterning our lives after the salvation service that Jesus gave to us. This holy gospel this morning is from Matthew chapter 20. Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the twelve aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. 
on the third day he will be raised to life. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and, kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? Jesus asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our next hymn is hymn 486 in Christian worship, Lord of Glory, You Have Bought Us. Shine of your good just 
Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's word upon which we are now going to focus is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, where it says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life. And peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, what defines your life right now? There is one answer that automatically is popping into almost all of our minds, right? You can say it in different ways, but there's one answer. It's it's all the same answer. The coronavirus, COVID-19, the pandemic, social distancing, It's hard not to be consumed by this unprecedented event that we are facing in our lives. After all, it's affecting us in many different ways. Maybe in the very least, it's keeping you isolated from the people with whom you typically interact day after day, and that isolation is making you lonely. But more than likely, it's affecting you in even more ways than that. Maybe you know someone who has gotten sick. Maybe you yourself have contracted this this virus, and you're wondering, worrying, if you're going to get the health care that you need. Maybe you're worried about contracting this virus in the future. 
Or maybe you're observing what this pandemic is doing to our world's economy and on a more personal level what it's doing to your own financial situation. It's easy to be consumed by this pandemic that our world is facing right now. It's easy to think that we are defined by this terrible thing that's happening in our world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, that's why it's such a good thing that we're gathered here together this morning, albeit maybe in a virtual way. It is so good to be gathered here with you because we are gathered here around God's word. And our God is present with us. And our God speaks a word to us this morning that assures us that our lives are not defined by COVID-19, not even as we are in the thick of this thing. Listen again to the opening verse which the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8. He says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Guys, that is the truth that defines our lives when times are good, when we are in good health, when we are prosperous, and when times are bad, when we might be sick, when we have suffered downturn. The truth that defines our lives is that we are children of God because we are in Christ Jesus. And when you are in Christ Jesus, you have everything that matters. You know, no doubt this COVID-19 virus that our world is facing is a, a, a terrible disease and, and a dreadful and scary thing. But the word of God that's before us this morning reminds us of something that is very, very important. It, it, it reminds us to adopt a worldview that is important for us to keep in mind, even during these, these scary days. These words remind us that there is something in our lives that is much scarier and more dreadful than a physical disease. Or perhaps we could say that there was something much scarier and more dreadful because we know that Christ has overcome it. Listen again. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit gives life that has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh. That is, God condemned sin in Christ's flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. The Apostle Paul reminds us this morning that there is a much worse sickness in our lives than a, a physical sickness. This is a, a spiritual sickness. And it's a spiritual sickness which we have had from the very time we were conceived and born. Paul refers to it as our sinful flesh. We maybe more often refer to it as our, our sinful nature. But no matter what you call it, whether you call it our sinful flesh or our sinful nature, this thing infects us right down to the core of our bodies and souls. In fact, a, a little bit later in this lesson from Romans chapter 8, Paul reminds us of how badly our sinful nature has affected us. He said, The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Do you grasp what that's saying? This is saying that our sinful nature is, is so 
evil and so corrupt that it considers God, who is good, the enemy. Our, our, our sinful nature considers God and his holy will something that is evil. Our sinful nature wants to rebel against what God calls good. And did you catch that last part? It, it, he said, nor can our sinful nature do what God wants. So even if our sinful nature would change its mind, hypothetically speaking, and want to do what God desired, and that's completely hypothetical because it cannot do that, but even if it would change its mind and want to do what God desires, it still couldn't because it's so rotten to the core. That's why Paul said in verse 3 of our lesson that the law of God was powerless because it was weakened by the sinful flesh. Now, don't under, misunderstand the point that Paul is making here. Paul is not saying that the law of God, which is good and holy, is powerless in and of itself. But what Paul is reminding us of is that we are powerless to do what God demands of us in his law, in God's law. You know, the law of God can really be summed up in two phrases, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. But we are so incapable of carrying out those commands of our God because our sinful nature is so consumed in selfishness and self-worship. I encountered an example of this this past week which really just stood out to me and, and drove this truth home. I really love to ski, and so occasionally I go and check out the blog of a mountain in Colorado that I had the, the, the ability to, to ski at a couple of years ago. And as I was looking at that, uh, that Ski Mountains blog post, it was stating that by order of the governor of Colorado, it was shutting down its operation until further notice to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. And as I started scrolling through the comments that were left after that announcement, there was one man who stated that he had moved to that area of Colorado specifically so that he could be in the midst of great skiing. And now this ski resort and the government was taking away that right that he had and he was never going to patronize that mountain again and he was going to remember it at the ballot box in 2022. ugly. Not one thought about looking out for the good of the neighbor. Not one thought about honoring the governing authorities that God has given us for our good. Just thoughts and words steeped in selfishness. But guys, we know that we don't have to go scrolling through the comments on an internet blog to encounter that sort of selfishness. All we have to do is look in the mirror. We can find examples of it in our lives just this past week or two, right? How long did it take when the news of the first school closing or business closing came down, how long did it take before we started thinking, this is really going to inconvenience me, or this is really going to hurt me? That's just one example. We can be so focused in on ourselves. The, the, the great church father, St. Augustine, said we're, we're curved in on ourselves, so consumed with self-worship. And that sort of selfishness in us should have been our eternal end. That's why Paul said, the mind governed by the flesh 
is death. There is only one thing that could save us from something as vile and corrupt and ugly as our sin. That sin of ours needed to be killed. It needed to be executed, put to death. Jesus Christ did just that. Jesus Christ put your sin to death. He did it on a Friday that we call good, a Black Friday, on a hill that was shaped like a skull. That's what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he said, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. When Jesus Christ died on the cross on Good Friday, he was gladly and willingly offering up his life for all of our sins. When Jesus hung on that cross, he was putting to death that selfish, sinful nature in us which should have been your eternal downfall and mine. But now in God's book, all of our sins of selfishness, all of our sins, period, they've been erased from God's record book. And in the place where our sins have been erased has been written the righteous life that Christ lived. A life that he lived, a perfect life that he lived, for himself, but that he credits to you. That's why the Apostle Paul wrote, the righteous requirements of God's law have been fulfilled in us. Not that we did what God considers righteous on our own, but Christ lived a righteous life for us in our place. He's credited us with his perfection. That's who you are in God's sight now, a perfect child of God. It reminds me of the words of one of my favorite hymns. Jesus, your blood and righteousness, my beauty are, my glorious dress. That's why there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Our lives are not defined by anything but this truth. We have a God who did not come to this world to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Doesn't that truth provide amazing hope and clarity and certainty in a dark an uncertain time. It tells us that no matter what happens, we're okay. We're going to be okay. Because we have a God who has overcome sin and Satan and death for us. Jesus has overcome hell for us. And so Jesus is more powerful than any physical illness. So Jesus can keep physical illness away from us. And if we get sick, Jesus will be with us. And if we should get sick, and if we should die, when we die, that thought holds no fear for us. Because we know that heaven is our home, and it is better by far. And it's ours because we are in Christ Jesus. And doesn't that truth give you a liberating freedom in your life? In Christ, we have been set free from sinful selfishness so that we can now live lives of selfless service to others. And I want you to think for a moment about 
how you can selflessly serve others, even and maybe especially during this time of pandemic. Call up your neighbors and check in with them. Make sure they're doing all right. Keep them company. And if they are in need, if they need groceries or, or anything like that, maybe you can help make that happen. But above all, what your neighbor needs right now is to be reminded of the truth that defines their lives. They need to know that in Christ Jesus, they are okay, better than okay. And you can share that truth by sharing a Bible passage with a friend or by sharing a link to an online devotion or to a worship service. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we, we are defined by Christ. And that means that we've been set free to serve him. May God bless us as we do it. Amen. Let's join together with the whole Christian church on earth and in heaven and confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Lord Jesus, we are so thankful to know that you came to our world not to be served, but to serve, and to give your life as a ransom for many, for all people. <coughs> we praise you for bringing us to faith in you through your Holy Spirit, and we ask you to increase our faith, especially in this time of pandemic and crisis in our world. Lord, with the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus, so many people are living their lives in uncertainty and fear. <clears throat> we know that you are the only one who can provide true peace and protection for us, and we ask you to bring that peace to many more people. Lord, we know that during times of crisis, opportunities abound for us to share our faith and the certain hope we have. We especially ask you to open doors of opportunity for us that we might be able to share why sickness and death hold no fear for us. We are so blessed to know that you are our rock and our refuge. If it is your will, Lord, spread, limit the spread of this virus. Grant healing to those who are sick. Be with the medical personnel who are treating those who are infected. Help all of us to see opportunities and then to capitalize on opportunities to love our neighbors, especially those in need. We also thank you for the successful surgeries which Hazel Miller, Bill Zerke, and Carolyn Zimmerman underwent this past week. Keep them safe in your arms as they continue to recover. Lord, we also ask you to watch over Sonia Benkin as she was recently diagnosed with cancer. Bless Sonia according to your gracious will. Grant her healing. Above all, use this illness as a way of lifting her eyes toward you and increasing her trust in your faithful promises. Bring the blessings of your grace to Alex Spurlock and Sarah Lair, who are being married today. Bless their marriage with your love and forgiveness. Help Alex and Sarah to pattern their marriage after your faithful love to us. We also ask for your blessing upon those deliberating divine calls right now, and we remember especially Justin Wickman, Ben Bain, and Matthew Moeller. Continue to provide for the people of your church, faithful ministers who share your good news. We offer all these prayers in your holy name, Lord Jesus, and it is in your name that we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Before we sing our closing hymn of worship today, I just want to share a couple of announcements with you. Number one, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so important, maybe certainly especially important at times like these, to be strengthened by our Savior's word of forgiveness and hope and comfort. Glad that you could worship with us. Um, Obviously, we don't know when we're going to be able to worship in person again, but keep on checking out our, uh, our, our website here, stpaulsonalaska.org, and also our St. Paul's on Alaska Facebook page for continued devotions and Bible studies and the like to keep you strong in the Word. Also take note that uh, at, at that link that's underneath the live stream feed, uh, that link for the worship folder, there are a number of announcements and an announcement page uh, after the worship folder. Hope you can make use of that. Also, there's also a link to uh, the sermon-based Bible study on Romans chapter 8 that I hope you can make use of this week. 
Join us again on Wednesday afternoon, God willing, at 2 o'clock when we're going to live stream our midweek Lenten service and all of these services that are being live streamed are being archived on our website and you can access them at any time. It's now time for our last hymn, O Church, Arise. Stand in 